Hey folks, welcome to another conversation on CFO Chat. As always, any corporate action happens, you have all the detail here. Often we talk about listed entities. Today we're talking about a non-listed entity and we are privileged to have Olga Godana, the CFO of Java. Welcome on set. Thank you, Julian. Karibu sana. And I should say, Olga is actually my former classmate from high school, so pleased to have you on set. Good to be here. Good to see you. The big news of the week, um, Actis is exiting uh, Java and uh, my entry point to this is uh, where does this leave the business when you look at the transition from ECP to Arbrage, now Axis is going out, where does this leave the venture? So the business is doing very well. So I think for us, the first focus is the business. As a management team, our focus remains the business. So um, the business of buying and selling businesses is shareholders' businesses, so they would have uh, better insights around that. But for us, the business is growing. Um, I was just um, reflecting about our last year sales. Last year was the best year on annual sales for us ever in the 24 years. That's the year ended June 23. June 23, yeah. yeah. So, so we've just completed that. So for us, the business is growing and we are heavily focused on it. We are innovating. We are, we are bringing Java to the consumer. So for us, uh, we are growing and we are happy to be here. Has, uh, and and this, this question comes to me a lot often. Has going to market, and by going to market I mean going to the Nairobi Securities Exchange, ever crossed uh, Java's many of options as a potential uh, route either to capital raise or for the way ahead? Uh, I, this probably is the question better answered by our, our shareholders, really. Um, but here yeah, the opportunity still exists for us. Um, uh, but you see, as a management team, at the end of the day, it's to make the business ready for that. It's to prepare the business for such a day. And we are sure that day is coming. It's just a matter of when. So at the end of the day, it's focused. Keep growing the business. Keep our heads down. Keep growing that business. And, uh, and when the shareholders decide that uh, an IPO is the way to go, we will be ready for it. All right. It sounds like you're having very strong growth on the top line. If you give us some flavor around that first, when you talk about the best year, it's up year on year by what percentage? But also I'm curious in the present environment where everyone is lamenting about escalating costs, how do your margins look like? So, yeah, so of course, coming off the COVID-19 pandemic, um, margins of all businesses, especially in our sector, have been hit. But for us, I think we are quite happy at the level of, uh, of, of, of uh, margins and growth that we are seeing. And for our type of business that is heavily uh, top line reliant, any such significant movements really trickles down. So it's quite good. Um, I think for us, first around cost is around innovation. So we innovate a lot around uh, our products and all of that. But also, at the end of the day, it's to give that excellent consumer experience. Because with that, the margins will come. Uh, so the margins are good, the business is very healthy, and, and we are confident um, as to how we are growing. You have mentioned uh, innovation, and I'm very curious. And one question which Kenyans keep asking me is, what became of Coquito? What became of Coquito we have seen as though there is a deceleration in terms of the expansion. What was the brand concept around it, and is it still growing? It is. So Coquito is our chicken and chips brand, for the ones who aren't familiar with it. Uh, Kukito is still part of our stable um, and uh, it's, it is still growing. So for us, the focus remains uh, the consumer, as I previously said, but around, around the same, the, the market tells us, and we've done quite a bit of research. So the market research that we have uh, in our stable tells us chicken is still king. We are a chicken eating nation, really. So what that means and the demographic that uh, Kukito serves is growing. It's the young people and our young people are the significant part of our population. So Kukito is still part of our, our, our stable and similar to all other brands that we have. So we still have uh, Kukito with us. Do you feel there could have been a miscalculation from a pricing standpoint around Kukito? Actually, no. So what well, the information we have and the research we have, we have uh, quite a bit of research. And when you look at the Kukito pricing, even compared to market, it's at the perfect price point. So even the research tells us it's at the right price point. And maybe it's some color to, to this entire story is that Kukito was just launched three months uh, prior to the onset of COVID-19. So it has been a bit of a victim of that. But with that, uh, we believe in the Kukito story and we believe in its price point. It's at the, it's at the right mark. So that entry point um, uh, for, for that particular offering um, is what Kukito offers. Yeah. All right. And still on the innovation, 
what proportion of your sales throughput goes through the online platforms, uh, the deliveries, versus the footfall walking into various stores across the country? So there's, uh, so in the past, um, and this is 2019 and prior, online on delivery sales were not a significant part of our business. This has now grown and it's noticeable really on our P&L. However, the dining sales, and that is the consumer who comes to sit and eat uh, at our restaurant, is still the large majority of that. Um, so that is growing. So what we do and as a team and as a management team, our focus is to grow both channels independently. And we've seen that coming through. Um, especially and, and especially for online sales because uh, it's all about partnering with the right uh, partners in terms of aggregators because you're not there to serve the customer. At the end of the day, you have to have the right partner who delivers the food in the way you, he would have gotten it at the restaurant to the consumer. So it's growing, uh, but, um, but dining is still a significant component of our business. Um, I think maybe to mention here is uh, in addition to the restaurant, so that's the restaurant side of the business. There is the uh, dining and, uh, and also takeaway, and that's also the, some of the things we innovate around. So takeaway is where the consumer just walks in and makes places their order and they are, um, they are given there. So part of that is to, to try and drive that convenience is we've launched a product called Cabside where the consumer orders in advance, they just their food is ready, they come and pick up, or um, they send their border person. We all have that border person say, pass by Java and bring me my thing. So, yeah, yeah. But also, um, even as you innovate and seek to extract efficiencies from this, it also has a cost element. How has that played out for you? So, yeah, so online, of course, comes with the additional cost of the aggregator uh, commission. So aggregators are the third-party delivery partners. Uh, for us, so that is part of it, but this is a growing sector, and we must be in it. So at the end of the day, it's a cost to serve that consumer, and we are happy to carry that cost, really. Okay. When you look at your... Um, outlets across the country, um, would you say there are those which have hit maturity? And for those, how are you looking at them strategically in terms of positioning them in an increasingly competitive landscape? So interestingly, um, our portfolio is still growing. Um, our portfolio of 86 restaurants now is still growing. Um, and uh, for, uh, the, the innovation is more around the convenience and the changing consumer demographic as opposed to just the normal um, renovation of the physical outlet, really. So we are innovating a lot more around that, so be it the delivery that we've spoken about, be it um, the, the gifting programs, so that because most of the consumers sometimes just want to gift their friends instead of having their friends over for lunch. So, and the, this another concept we've just introduced, which is the Java on the Go con, uh, concept in partnership with uh, one of our fuel station partners. So this is just literally bringing the uh, experience to the consumer um, and, and adopting to that change instead of just doing the old uh, brick and mortar uh, for the business. So, and we look at our restaurants in sort of different components and uh, one of the areas we look at is our express outlets. So our express outlets serve that convenience customer and uh, they, they are a key component in our growth strategy as well. So you'll see quite a number of them around town and we'll continue to grow that channel. And uh, I remember Java once spoke about a very aggressive expansion across East Africa. Is that still a, um, an item in the pipeline, especially when you look at it vis-a-vis -vis the realities which come in the post-COVID environment? Yes, yes, very much so. Um, so for us, we are always looking for opportunities to grow. So we already exist in the three East African markets of Kenya, Uganda and Rwanda, and we are looking to expand in these markets quite um, significantly. But also our part of our long-term strategy is to look at new markets where we don't have a presence yet. And uh, yeah, and we, we keep growing, we keep growing. We, we are bringing Java close to everybody. <laughs> So are there any sites identified across the region? Yes, yes, yes. So the site identification prog uh, is, is, is part of our property team's uh, really everyday function. So they are constantly out and about scouting for sites, both in Kenya, Uganda, and in Rwanda as well. So constantly people on the ground looking for sites that are suitable for our, 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 our outlets. Okay. 
There has been uh, a mention to me of uh, the possibility or viability of uh, consolidation within the F&B space in Kenya, food and beverage space in Kenya. And I'm curious as to whether Java would have appetite for uh, an acquisition. So, interesting, this question. Um, our market, in my opinion, is still relatively young and has a lot of space for all of us because uh, all the players in this industry have different offerings and they meet the consumer needs at various points. So we feel that the opportunity for us to uh, coexist is there and it's quite huge. So for us, it's actually more diversification within our existing uh, portfolio as opposed to looking to consolidate. But uh, yeah, so focus heavily on uh, what our current offering is and how we grow our current offerings and modify that or innovate around that so that we can, uh, we can meet the consumer need, really. Okay. There has been um, a number of players in the food and beverage space have indicated to me that one of their biggest headaches at this particular juncture in the economy is uh, working capital uh, because of the prevailing environment, um, disposable income is depressed, uh, costs have escalated. And I'm wondering, what's your experience at Java? around this? So our working, our working capital management is really what we do um, consistently and, and quite well. Uh, our type of industry should be, is, is, is very good from a working capital management perspective because we receive our sales in cash. So most of a majority of our sales are received at the point of sale. So it's easy to manage working capital from that perspective as opposed to other industries where they have to extend extended credit periods to their consumers. Um, so for us, it's just to manage that very closely and, uh, and, and drive growth, really, based on that. But for us, it's, it's not hard. It's not a headache. It's not a headache. <laughs> okay. A headache. <laughs> what about your retail presence? Um, on, on, when you go now to the products you're now putting out in the market, um, how is that faring? Very well. Actually, that uh, sector of our um, sort of business is driven by our Foodscape division. So Foodscape is our retail-facing um, division. It's growing exponentially. I think the word there is exponential. Uh, wow, we, we look at it uh, every year and we, we get impressed by the level of growth that it's delivering. And Foodscape is in the retail um, aspect, so the cookies, the coffee, and uh, all that our consumers buy at, uh, at, at the point of sale uh, tills. But there's also other uh, elements to it. So the B2B, so we serve other businesses um, in similar space as ourselves. In certain cases, we serve, uh, we do um, huge corporate caterings. Um, so that business is growing and, and uh, there's still significant opportunity for it. Um, so, and we even look around new product innovation. So for example, we've just launched our cold brew. Uh, which is new in market really and, uh, in, and it's growing and it's flying off the shelves really. So um, that is a division of our business that we are quite proud of and, uh, and, and uh, quite investing quite a bit to, to see it grow. Do you see potentially that side of the business uh, stealing the thunder from the dining? Uh, well, our consumers in this market still like coming to our restaurants, interestingly. So we keep joking about the fact that Java is where people have business meetings, where they have personal meetings, they have, we have family meetings, so Java is still that, uh, that, that space. And that is still a significant part of our culture as a, as, as a Kenyan community and even as an East African uh, larger community. So Foodscape still has some way to go, but yeah, we, we, we encourage it to grow. There is healthy competition in our business, really. Okay. Yeah. As we dial down on our conversation, many businesses I've spoken to in the present environment are really grappling with um, wrong way risk. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, hard currency debt on your books, your sales are in shillings, the shilling is taking a hit every day. I'm really surprised you've indicated to me that Java has no hard currency in its books. No, so our currency is local, our, our debt is in local currency and locally sourced. Yeah, locally sourced, local currency debt. So the headache the rest are having on FX is not really... <laughs> it's, it's not. And even in addition to that, uh, also our, we locally source our raw materials. Yeah. Literally over 90% of our raw materials are locally sourced in market. So the issue of the, of the, of the Kenya shilling sliding, it's, it's a 
global concern for us as a business, yes, but not really um, directly impacting our business. And, and we are proud of the fact that we've been able to localize quite a lot of our, of our inputs mm -hmm. so that we don't have exposures to such situations as this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And finally, how did uh, the COVID-19 experience change your supply chain? It's um, that's a good question. Yeah, so f for us, it created that uh, innovation as top of mind. At the end of the day, first, um, it, it allowed us to appreciate the partnership that we have in market. So with our suppliers, with our landlords, with everybody. So we appreciate uh, all our partners in this market quite a lot. And I think COVID-19 really just shone a light on that for us. But also it, uh, it, it, it grew the robustness of our supply chain, even as a function in our business. So we are constantly and always thinking ahead. Um, and some other things is also the fact that the business keeps growing at the rate it's growing. We, we have to be ready. We really have to be ready for all of this. So um, localization was actually part of that. And then just having adequate uh, stock and stock management is a key area of focus, really, especially for our type of business. Because uh, once uh, Julian walks into a restaurant, he expects his cup of coffee. It doesn't matter which day it is, what time of the day it is, his cup of coffee, his uh, favorite pastry or whatever has to be delivered and has to be ready and delivered at the same quality every day. So this yeah. is a significant part. And Foodscape actually is our back-end business and it helps us quite a lot with that. It's an entire enterprise back there.